A creator deity or creator god is a deity or god responsible for the creation of the earth world. In monotheism, the single god is often also the creator. A number of monolatristic traditions separate a secondary creator from a primary transcendent being, identified as a primary creator. Polytheism. In polytheistic creation, the world often comes into being organically, e.g., sprouting from a primal seed, sexually, by miraculous birth by Hyrus Gamos, violently, by the slaying of a primeval monster, or artificially, by a divine demiurge or craftsman. Sometimes, a god is involved, wittingly or unwittingly, in bringing about creation. Examples include, African contexts, Mbombo of Bakuba mythology, who vomited out the world upon feeling a stomach ache Egyptian mythology Atom in Ennead, whose semen becomes the primal components of the universe Ptah creating the universe by the word Uncle Uncle in Zulu mythology, American contexts. Nanabaoju, Ojiwe deity, a shapeshifter and a co-creator of the world Kotliku in Aztec mythology Viracocha in Inca mythology a trickster deity in the form of a raven in Inuit mythology, Asian contexts, El in Canaanite religion Esij Malan in Mongolian mythology, King of the Skies Kamui in Ainu mythology. Who built the world on the back of a trout is an Agi and is an army no Makoto in Japanese mythology, who churned the ocean with a spear, creating the islands of Japan Marduk killing Tiamat in the Babylonian and Numerellus Vishvakarman in Vedic mythology, responsible for the creation of the universe. The Nasadiya Sukta of the Rig Veda is agnostic about the existence of an omniscient deity but refers to the birth of the universe from a primal seed. European contexts. The sons of Bor slaying the primeval giant Ymir in Norse mythology Rod in Slavic mythology Ipmil or Radian Attje in Sami mythology. Oceanic contexts. Rangi Nui, the Sky Father, and Parpatu Anuku, the Earth Mother in Maori mythology, Platonic Demiurge. Plato, in his dialogue Timaeus, describes a creation myth involving a being called the Demiurge. This concept was continued in Neoplatonism and Gnosticism. In Neoplatonism, the Demiurge represents the second cause or dyad, after the monad. In Gnostic dualism, the Demiurge is an imperfect spirit and possibly evil being, transcended by divine fullness. Unlike God, Plato's Demiurge is unable to create ex nihilo. Monolatrism. Monolatristic traditions would separate a secondary creator from the primary transcendent being, identified as a primary creator. According to Gaudiya Vishnavis, Brahma is the secondary creator and not the supreme. Vishnu is the primary creator. According to Vishnu the belief Vishnu creates the basic universal shell and provides all the raw materials and also places the living entities within the material world, fulfilling their own independent will. Brahma works with the materials provided by Vishnu to actually create what are believed to be planets in Puranic terminology, and he supervises the population of them. Monism Monism has its origin in Hellenistic philosophy as a concept of all things deriving from a single substance or being. Following a long and still current tradition Huoin claimed that Pantheists of monists, they believe that there is only one being, and that all other forms of reality are either modes of it or identical with it, although, like Baruch Spinoza, some pantheists may also be monists, and monism may even be essential to some versions of pantheism. Not all pantheists are monists. Some are polytheists and some are pluralists, they believe that there are many things and kinds of things and many different kinds of value. Not all monists are pantheists. Exclusive monists believe that the universe, the god of the pantheists, simply does not exist. In addition, monists can be deists, pandeists, theists or panentheists, believing in a monotheistic god that is omnipotent and all-pervading, and both transcendent and immanent.
There are monist pantheists and panentheists in Hinduism, Judaism, in Christianity and in Islam. In Advaita Vedanta, Brahman is the abstract notion of the Absolute from which the universe takes its origin and at an ultimate level. All assertions of a distinction between Brahman, other gods and creation are meaningless. Non-creationism Buddhism The Buddha rejected the existence of a creator deity denied endorsing many views on creation and stated that questions on the origin of the world are not ultimately useful for ending suffering, but stated before he attained Samadhi, in the Lotus Sutra that the universe and world and all possible matter are governed by the mystic law. Some gods in Buddhism have the view that they are creators of the world. For example, Baka Brahma. However, Buddha pointed out to them that they do not know the whole extent of the universe, and further, the spiritual power of the Buddha was greater than the spiritual power of these gods who thought they created the world. One of the suttas dealing with this subject is the Kevata Sutta. The Buddha said that their view of being the creator of the world is a misconception, and that these Brahma gods actually have a cause which lead their origination. Buddha even tells how the views concerning creator gods originate in the world through junior Brahma gods who, on their passing away, get reborn as a human, and through practicing meditation are able to remember their previous life as a junior god to a Brahma god. Then, he starts to preach this view of a creator god to others. In Buddhism, causality is the responsible for creation. Dharma and enlightenment being interrelated with empty causal phenomena. In Mahayana the potential enlightenment inherent in empty causal phenomena is represented in the form of the omnipresent eternal Buddha. However, this is not equated with a literal belief in a creator deity. Jainism Jainism does not support belief in a creator deity. According to Jain doctrine, the universe and its constituents, soul, matter, space, time, and principles of motion have always existed. All the constituents and actions are governed by universal natural laws. It is not possible to create matter out of nothing and hence the sum total of matter in the universe remains the same. Similarly, the soul of each living being is unique and uncreated and has existed since beginningless time. The Jain theory of causation holds that a cause and its effect are always identical in nature and therefore a conscious and immaterial entity like God cannot create a material entity like the universe. Furthermore, according to the Jain concept of divinity, any soul who destroys its karmas and desires, achieves liberation. A soul who destroys all its passions and desires has no desire to interfere in the working of the universe. Moral rewards and sufferings are not the work of a divine being, but a result of an innate moral order in the cosmos, a self-regulating mechanism whereby the individual reaps the fruits of his own actions through the workings of the karmas. Through the ages, Jain philosophers have adamantly rejected and opposed the concept of creator and omnipotent God and this has resulted in Jainism being labeled as nasty kadasana or atheist philosophy by the rival religious philosophies. The theme of non-creationism and absence of omnipotent God and divine grace runs strongly in all the philosophical dimensions of Jainism, including its cosmology, karmath moksha and its moral code of conduct. Jainism asserts a religious and virtuous life is possible without the idea of a creator god. Hinduism Hinduism includes a range of viewpoints about the origin of life, creationism and evolution. The accounts of the emergence of life within the universe vary in description, but classically the god Brahma, from a trimurti of three gods also including Vishnu and Shiva, is described as performing the act of creation, or more specifically of propagating life within the universe, with the other two deities being responsible for preservation and destruction, respectively. In sectarian versions of creation, often the patron deity is termed the creator. In Vishnavism, Vishnu creates Brahma and orders him to order the rest of universe. In Shaivism, Shiva may be treated as the creator. In Shaktism, the great goddess creates the Trimurti. 
Most Hindu schools do not regard the scriptural creation myth as a literal truth, and often the creation stories themselves do not go into specific detail, thus leaving open the possibility of incorporating at least some theories in support of evolution. Some Hindus find support for, or foreshadowing of evolutionary ideas in scriptures, namely the Vedas. An exception to this acceptance is the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, which includes several members who actively oppose Darwinism and the modern evolutionary synthesis. Monotheism, Zoroastrianism, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Sikhism and Atonism teach that creation is the origin of the universe by the action of God. Atonism initiated by Pharaoh Akhenaten and Queen Nefertiti around 1330 BCE, during New Kingdom period in ancient Egyptian history. They built an entirely new capital city for themselves in worshippers of their sole creator god on a wilderness. His father used to worship Aten alongside other gods of their polytheistic religion. Aten, for a long time before his father's time, was revered as a god among the many gods and goddesses in Egypt. Atonism faded away after death of the pharaoh. Despite different views, Atonism is considered by some scholars to be one of the frontiers of monotheism in human history. Judaism The creation narrative is made up of two stories, roughly equivalent to the two first chapters of the book of Genesis. The first account employs a repetitious structure of divine fiat and fulfillment, then the statement, and there was evening and there was morning the xth day for each of the six days of creation in each of the first three days there is an act of division day one divides the darkness from light day two the waters above from the waters below and day three the sea from the land in each of the next three days these divisions are populated Day 4 populates the darkness and light with sun, moon and stars. Day 5 populates seas and skies with fish and fowl. And finally land-based creatures and mankind populate the land. The two stories are complementary rather than overlapping, with the first concerned with the cosmic plan of creation, while the second focuses on man as cultivator of his environment and as a moral agent. There are significant parallels between the two stories, but also significant differences. The second account, in contrast to the regimented seven-day scheme of Genesis chapter 1, uses a simple flowing narrative style that proceeds from God's forming the first man through the Garden of Eden to the creation of the first woman, and the institution of marriage, in contrast to the omnipotent God of Genesis chapter 1. Creating a God like humanity, the God of Genesis chapter 2 can fail as well as succeed. The humanity he creates is not God-like, but is punished for acts which would lead to their becoming God-like, and the order and method of creation itself differs. Together, this combination of parallel character and contrasting profile point to the different origin of materials in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and Gen 2 to 4. However elegantly they have now been combined, Christianity ancient Near Eastern mythologies and classical creation myths in Greek mythology, envisioned the creation of the world as resulting from the actions of a god or gods upon already existing primeval matter, known as chaos. An early conflation of Greek philosophy with the narratives in the Hebrew Bible came from Philo of Alexandria, writing in the context of Hellenistic Judaism. Philo equated the Hebrew creator deity Yahweh with Aristotle's primum movens in an attempt to prove that the Jews had held monotheistic views even before the Greeks. However, this was still within the context of creation from pre-existing materials. The classical tradition of creation from chaos first came under question in Hellenistic philosophy, which developed the idea that the primum movens must have created the world out of nothing. Theologians debate whether the Bible itself teaches creation ex nihilo. Traditional interpreters argue on grammatical and syntactical grounds that this is the meaning of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, which is commonly rendered 
In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth they further find support for this view in New Testament passages like Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 by faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible and Revelation chapter 4 verse 11 for you God created all things and by your will they existed and were created. However, other interpreters understand creation ex nihilo as a second century theological development. According to this view, church fathers opposed notions appearing in pre-Christian creation myths and in Gnosticism, notions of creation by a demiurge out of a primordial state of matter. Jewish thinkers took up the idea, which became important to Judaism, to ongoing strands in the Christian tradition, and, as a corollary, to Islam. Islam puts a heavy emphasis on the conceptualization of God as strictly singular. God is unique and inherently one, all-merciful and omnipotent. According to tradition there are 99 names of God each of which evoke a distinct attribute of God. All these names refer to Allah, the supreme in all comprehensive divine name. Among the 99 names of God, the most famous and most frequent of these names are the compassionate and the merciful. Creation is seen as an act of divine choice and mercy, one with a grand purpose. And we did not create the heaven and earth and act between them in play. Rather, the purpose of humanity is to be tested. Who has created death in life, that he may test you which of you is best indeed? And he is the Almighty, the oft forgiving. Those who pass the test are rewarded with paradise. Verily for the righteous there will be a fulfillment of desires, according to the Islamic teachings. God exists above the heavens and the creation itself. The Quran mentions, He it is who created for you all that is on earth. Then he is Shawa towards the heaven and made him seven heavens and he is the all-knower of everything. At the same time, God is unlike anything in creation. There is nothing like unto him, and he is the hearing, the seeing, and nobody can perceive God in totality. Vision perceives him not, but he perceives all vision, and he is the subtle, the acquainted. God in Islam is not only majestic and sovereign, but also a personal God. And indeed we have created man, and we know what his own self whispers to him, and we are nearer to him than his jugular vein. Allah commands the believers to constantly remember him and to invoke him alone. Islam teaches that God as referenced in the Quran is the only God and the same God worshipped by members of other Abrahamic religions such as Christianity and Judaism. Sikhism One of the biggest responsibilities in the faith of Sikhism is to worship God as the Creator, termed Wahe Guru who is shapeless, timeless, and sightless, i.e., Niranka, Akal, and Alak Niranjan. The religion only takes after the belief in one God for all, or it conquer. Baha'i in the Baha'i faith God is the imperishable, uncreated being who is the source of all existence. He is described as a personal God, unknowable, inaccessible, the source of all revelation, eternal, omniscient, omnipresent and almighty. Although transcendent and inaccessible directly, his image is reflected in his creation. The purpose of creation is for the creator to have the capacity to know and love its creator. Other Chinese traditional cosmology Peng Yu can be interpreted as another creator deity. In the beginning there was nothing in the universe except a formless chaos. However, this chaos began to coalesce into a cosmic egg for 18,000 years. Within it, the perfectly opposed principles of yin and yang became balanced and Peng Yu emerged from the egg. Peng Yu is usually depicted as a primitive, hairy giant with horns on his head and clad in furs. Peng Yu set about the task of creating the world. He separated yin from yang with a swing of his giant axe, creating the earth and the sky. To keep them separated, Peng Yu stood between them and pushed up the sky. This task took 18,000 years. With each day the sky grew 10 feet higher, the earth 10 feet wider, and Peng Yu 10 feet taller. In some versions of the story, Peng Yu is aided in this task by the four most prominent beasts, namely the turtle, the keeling, the phoenix, 
and the dragon. After 18,000 years had elapsed, Peng Yu was laid to rest. His breath became the wind, his voice the thunder, left eye the sun and right eye the moon, his body became the mountains and extremes of the world. His blood formed rivers, his muscles the fertile lands, his facial hair the stars and milky way, his fur the bushes and forests, his bones the valuable minerals, his bone marrows, sacred diamonds, his sweat fell as rain, and the fleas on his fur carried by the wind became human beings all over the world. The first writer to record the myth of Peng Yu was Zhu Zheng during the Three Kingdoms period. Shangdi is another creator deity, possibly prior to Peng Yu, sharing concepts similar to Abrahamic faiths. Kazakh According to Kazakh folk tales, Jizanyan is the creator of the world. 